24 minutes past 11. According to the Land Registry, house prices have gone up by the biggest jump uh, since 2004. They rose 1.7% in July. Uh, so have things bottomed out? Is now the right time to grab a house, grab a bargain? Listen to that. I'm looking at the Daily Express there. Just coming up on my screen. House prices jump is the headline. Biggest rise, say the Express, uh, for five years. You can give us a call tonight, 0500 909 uh, 693. Jonathan Davis, property expert, managing director of financial planners, Armstrong Davis. Morning. Uh, good evening, Jonathan. <laughs> good evening, it's not, Stephen. It's not the morning anymore, Johnny Boy. <laughs> <laughs> David Sims, Birmingham Estate Agent. Hello, David. How are you, Stephen? Um, the, expre- the Express are just absolutely uh, obsessed, aren't they, with house prices? Well, <laughs> as I'm sure are you. Yeah. And, and the property investor, Sarah Beanie, presenter, of course, of Channel 4's Property Snakes and Ladders. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Sarah, hi. we'll start with you because Jonathan will go off on one. I, I know he will. Uh, <laughs> has, has the property market bottomed out, Sarah? Um, I, I personally, I mean, <coughs> the truth is nobody knows. So anyone who says they know isn't telling the truth because they don't know. Um, you, all you can do is kind of gather the information from around you and, and make a bit of a, 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 a bit of a punt on it. And, um, but uh, personally, I, I think we are bouncing along the bottom. I, I don't think that we'll see massive uh, drops from this level where we are now and we've seen considerable drops so far that we've seen you know if you think about the fact that we're seeing one percent rises i think we'll probably see one percent drops again but and when i say bouncing on the bottom i sort of mean that we'll you know we may go up one or two percent or down one or two percent but we'll stay pretty much where we are i think for quite a long time the average home is now valued at 155 grand 155,885 quid uh, a 1.7% rise uh, in England and Wales in July compared with June. But this means that prices are still 11.7% lower in July than they were in the same month a year earlier. And sales were also down. Jonathan Davis, what do you read into it? You don't have a 15-year rise in house prices ending in a bubble and then the biggest economic and financial collapse since World War I and a house price crash which only lasts 18 months. You quote the Express, Stephen. Let me quote the front page of the Financial Times. Business spending in fastest fall since 1966. That is an example of what's really going on in the economy. The only reason why house prices have risen in the last few months is government stimulus, and that is going to stop in due course. Then there'll be nothing holding it up. Sarah? Yeah, well, well it's interesting that. I mean, I, I think that the... the the thing that will, I certainly agree that we've got some tricky times ahead. And quite honestly, I think that the, the housing market's in a much better state than the rest of the economy in the country. Um, so I would agree with that. And ultimately, incredibly low interest rates are, are artificially holding the, the market where it is. Having said that, I still think that there's, um, you know, people have got to live in houses and and they've got to live somewhere. But the confidence is completely out of the market, Sarah. People have been stung. Well, you know, I'm not sure it is. We launched our site, Tepelo, um, about three weeks ago, which is a way of selling a house without an estate agent not charging any money and we've had um we've sold already we've got 11 other under others under offer we've got masses of people who are interested and i kind of think actually you know there there is quite a lot of confidence in the market there's a lot of money in the market and well, a lot of the, the amount of sales last year, 61,743 uh, between February and May. Do you know what it is this year? 35,848. It's nearly half. Yeah, but if you compare um, the market at the moment to, say, five, six years ago, it's, I mean, it's, it is very... We've been, we went through an incredible spike up to 2007, and we've gone through an incredible drop since then. But I think you know, if, you, if you take the last sort of five, six years out of the equation, it's not a particularly, and the economy is not in a great state at all. I can see that, and there's some tricky times ahead. But the property market itself is, is it's only when you compare it to relatively recent years that it's that it's really dramatic. David, what what are you seeing on the ground in Birmingham? I'm seeing that we've sold more properties in the last three months than I did in the previous nine. Um, well, that, that doesn't sell a lot, though. Does no, it? it doesn't. No, because we were coming from a very low point. Exactly. What I would 
what I would say is I agree with 99% of what Sarah's just said there. I actually think there is a fair bit of confidence coming back into the market. There are people looking to buy, wanting to buy, and actually my sales levels aren't that far off what they were. Um, you know, 18 months, two years ago. That doesn't necessarily mean prices are increasing. I don't, I don't buy the 1.4% going up, but I do feel that we have hit the bottom. Um, and I do, I, I haven't certainly noticed any change in the last three or four months, upwards or downwards in, in prices, but I have noticed the change in people wanting to buy and wanting to get into the market. What are you saying, Jonathan? Um, because we hear the same arguments from estate agents and developers year in, year out. Um, what are they? Um, interest rates are low. Um, unemployment's low. Um, it's a small island. It's a heavy populated. Aren't nonsense. The only reason why we had the house price bubble in the five years up to 2007 was because of easier and easier lending. The banks how clearly have collapsed. They now currently have enormous sums of doubtful debts. Have you not noticed that 10% of all shops are empty? I, I'm in the southeast. Walk around the city of London, the so-called great city of London and the West End. Just look up to the first and second floors and see two let signs. Look at unemployment. It's practically doubling over two years. Look at pensions and house prices. They're both down big time over the last two years, but debt isn't. Look at government debt and so on and so on. And look at the, the land economy registry. is in a state of collapse. And look at the land registry at recording one6 yeah. 7% of a lift. Look at the Nationwide Building Society's index. Yep. That's yep. based on mortgage data. This week revealed prices had ridden, risen 1.6% in August compared with July. Hard facts, Jonathan. I, absolutely, and I'm not disputing what's happened in the very, very short term. And I said it right at the beginning, it's all because of government stimulus. At some point in the relatively near future, the government stimulus will end and then there'll be nothing holding up the economy. Where does the government stimulus come from? It comes from borrowing from global markets. How are we going to repay the gov government stimulus? We're going to pay it after the next election by public sector, sector spending cuts, let me finish, for the next 10 years and increase taxes. There are so many reasons why house prices are going to fall 20 or 30 percent. Another 20, 30 percent. For the next two or three years. Alone, yes. But that, that, what you're then Maybe. implying is that there's an enormous, enormous quantity of people in the country, further, more than there are already, who will be, uh, properties will be at 40, 30, 40 percent of what they were at the top of the market. Now, the top of the market was, was an unrealistic level to be. But I just, I just, I mean, I, I take your opinion, but I just think that it's a, it's a very, um, it's a very dramatic, um, uh, it, it is dramatic, Sarah. You're absolutely correct. The economy is as bad as you can find in the 21st century in the Western world. Okay. Actually, my forecast is 40 to 50% fall from the high to 2011, well, 2012. Well, David, stay with me. Uh, you're getting angry at Jonathan tonight. We're going to come back to this straight after the news. You want to feed into it. What's it like where you live? 0500 909 693. We'll try to read the property market straight after the news. It's 11.32. Text 85058. Text will be charged at your standard message rate. Call 0500 909 693. Calls are free from most landlines, but some networks and mobile operators will charge. This is Five Live. It's the Nolan Show on Five Live. Noel Gallagher has quit the Oasis tonight. We'll have more on that very, very shortly indeed. We're talking about house prices, land registry saying uh, prices have gone up with the biggest jump since 2004. Uh, property investor Sarah Beanie uh, still with us tonight. This is Jonathan Davies, another property expert. David Sims, Birmingham estate agent, another property expert. Uh, Sarah, does it depend uh, where you're living in the UK as to how confident you can be? Presumably it does. Well, it does. I, I mean, I, I, I sort of think in terms of confidence, I, I, I think that, um, you know, life is, is not that long. If you're lucky, you get 80 years. And to be putting your whole life on hold to, to hang out and wait for the economy to do something that you think it should or shouldn't do, which makes it an appropriate time for you to be buying or, or not buying, I, I think is, is personally, I think it's a bit unwise. I mean, if you're looking at, at investing in property in terms of a business, then, you know, that's a slightly different issue and you take a whole load of different equations into into hand but i think if you're you know if you're the time in your life is right right now is is right for you to be buying 
a home um, and you can afford it, then I, I really don't, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that you should be sitting back thinking, no, no, because well, the economy isn't, isn't quite right well, for me to do that. Well, of course, if Jonathan Davis is right, it's going to be 30% cheaper soon. Well, you'll be able to find lots of people who's going to, who will say it's thirty percent cheaper soon, and lots of people will say it's thirty percent up soon. I, I think that you have to make your own judgment on it. Well, I mean, actually, very it's... few people, Sarah, with respect, are predicting a massive surge in house prices. No, no, which is it's absolutely right because it's extremely unlikely to be happening for a very, very long time. Um, so, uh, I don't think anyone should be banking Investors on that. Investors are buying them. Sorry? Investors are buying. I'm finding that more and more investors are actually coming into the market, especially at the bottom end, Sarah. Um, people that have perhaps got a few grand in the bank, they're getting nothing in return on interest, and actually they're thinking, well, instead of putting it in the bank, we'll actually throw it into some property. So I'm finding investors are coming in and replacing the first-time buyers as they did several years ago. I think I think the slightly dangerous thing at the moment with the market, for me, is the, is the fact that people are under the impression that interest rates... I think was, Well, I don't think that people are. I think there are some people people who are under the impression that interest rates will uh, not go up before the property prices go up. And I think that's a, that's a major error to but be under that impression. Listen to what we've done, though. We've talked now about property for the last 20 minutes, and, and surely we are brainwashed in this con- country uh, that we have got to own property. And, and if the, the downside is more possible than the upside, in other words, if it is possible... Uh, that, that property could plunge another 20, 30 percent, but no one's predicting a similar upside. Why is it not sensible, Sarah, for people to rent over the short to medium term? Why, why do they have to be compelled to buy, buy, buy? Well, it's certainly sensible. If it's right in, in your life to be renting, then you should be renting. If you, if you want to buy, then I, all I'm saying is that if, if you want to buy and if it's right for you to buy, then I don't think... I, I think it's extremely unlikely you're going to be... Anyway, you're, you're buying a property for the next 25 years. So in the next 25 years, we're going to see little bits of movement here and there and, and you know, prices will change. So I, I kind of think that, you know, I just think that to be... If, you, if what feels right to you is to buy a house instead of rent, if you want to rent, then absolutely great. And I totally agree with you. If you're renting, the boiler breaks down. It's not your problem. As it comes with a lot of advantages and you don't spend your weekends in, in DIY shops. However, if you really want to buy and if that's, that's what makes you happy and you can afford it, I just don't think that you should be, you should be worrying about um, uh, what may or may not happen in the economy. Jonathan? As an investment advisor, I have never once recommended to anyone that they should sell their own home. I certainly recommend it to people to divest of excess property. Um, This thing about um, if it suits your lifestyle to buy a property, absolutely. You know, I'm an investment advisor. I do the numbers. Um, I'm not an artist in the sense that uh, I'm like an engineer. Um, If it doesn't fit... Um, with a person's lifestyle, then sure, if they want to buy, go ahead and buy. But I tell you what, don't lose your job. Like the three quarters of a million people who have lost their job in the last nine months, and all expectations are another three quarters of a million are going to lose their job over the next nine months. Um, And um, interest rates... You're full of heart Uh, tonight, Jonathan, are you? I'm an investment advisor, um, and I can only say it as I see it. Um, and the fact is, literally, not one of our clients has lost money in the last two years. Interest rates, they cannot go any lower. The Bank of England rate is 0.5%. Mortgage rates, long-term mortgage rates, are already rising because global markets require it. To get a reasonable mortgage rate, you have to have a 30 to 40% deposit. 80% of purchases for first-time buyers this year have come from deposits from Bank of Mum and Dad. That's going to end in due, co- in due course. And Mr Sims talked about people not getting any interest in the bank. That's bunkum. You can get 3 to 4% Whoopee. deposit interest in the building society right now, okay. and that is far better than anything you get on buy to let. Right. Stephen, yeah. I, my office is 500 yards away from LDV, which recently closed down, and I'm sure you covered. It's a mile away from Jaguar. It's three mile away from, from, from Land Rover. So we know all about unemployment, but I'm still getting people wanting to buy because, as Sarah quite rightly said, it suits their needs. There is still a desire to buy. Nobody's saying prices are going 
going to go up 30%, but also they're not going to drop 30%. The man's been reading too many books. Um, he's not in. He's not in the real. He's not in the real world. And you know, come down to my office in Birmingham, in the Muck and Bullets, in the Eastern Kashmirian sector of Birmingham, and you will find there are people wanting to buy, but investors wanting to buy who are replacing the old first-time buyers. There are regular first-time buyers wanting to buy, and your first, second, third house owners. They all want to move on. There is a there is a general There's nearly desire half as to many move people. on. Exactly. You, you can you can push out as many words as you like. Let's look at the exactly. hard facts. Yeah. There are nearly half as many people buying this year as there were over a similar period last year. That's very true. But that but well, there's still so a huge that, so not still, a suggestion. So there's still but, a huge amount of people. Well, there's Stephen, not a huge amount of buy, people. No, there is, there is a huge amount no, of people not. still want. No, Stephen, there is. No, honestly, Stephen, there is. I know you have to play your BBC St- play down the St- middle here, but there is, you know. Well, I'm there not playing... Are, hold on are, a minute. Scrap the BBC playing. playing down the middle stuff. I'm looking at the stats. Wait. These stats say that sales per month between February and May this year, 35,000. What was it last year? 60. 1,000. But you're making out that the market's, got, you know, the backside's going to fall out of the market. People shouldn't buy. I'm making that out. Isn't, that, that, isn't, that, that is not the case at all. I'm making you out. You started this programme off by saying prices have risen. I don't agree with that. But it's also, <laughs> there's not doom and gloom. Prices don't have to rise for it tell to be that, a good market. Tell you know. that, David, to the people in Wales, an 8.3% drop over the last 12 months. The northeast of England, a 13.2% drop. The northwest of England, an 11.9% drop. Where does it stop? Do you know what I think? I think you have to be very careful of statistics. I have very to say careful. here, I think that to base, um, to base, every, I know everything's based on statistics, but you need to actually, I, I think that if you actually go back to what the statistics are based on, it's a, a limited number of houses. Land registry. Uh, absolutely land registry, but they're basing, they're, so they're basing their, their figures on the fact that, that X amount of houses have sold for a total of X amount. Now, uh, therefore, they're saying, well, prices must have dropped, but they don't know how big the houses are because re- the land registry doesn't record that. It's like for like. What do you mean it's like? The land registry survey is like for like. It's about repeat sales. It's the same properties reviewed. It's the only survey the in the country... The haven't been sold twice in the last it's year. The, it's the only survey in the country which actually is like for like. No, but the same houses... You're saying all the same houses sold last year and they sold again this year. And therefore not, they know not, how much they've gone up or down. Talk to the land registry about how they do it. It's I the know, only but, survey in the country that is like for like. Well, it, and I'm, the I fact... Can, the categorically fact is, say that the properties that sold last year have not sold again this year and therefore they're basing okay. the properties they're, they're basing it on the same same properties that have sold all right it's okay. an average I, it's, you know it's amazing um for years we have been told by estate agents and developers that if you want to go to a survey which tells you what's really happening go to the land registry all of a sudden it's being questioned um, the fact is, as you I'm quite question, said, I'm not questioning Stephen, it, Jonathan. I'm not the, questioning it at all. Uh, I'm just saying, is, Stephen, my, the, 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 best, the best market you can find is how many times your phone rings in yes, a day, how many yeah, times your door opens I, in the office, I, exactly, and, my and, phone's ringing, answer, and my phone's ringing and, a lot and my door's opening a lot. And let me answer that point for the listeners. In the years, in the 10 years up to 2007, in fact, early 2008, normal monthly transaction numbers were 110,000 okay. a month. You've been reading too many books. You they need are, to get out a bit more, you know. They are... I beg your pardon. You need they to get out now, a bit more. Yeah, I'm an investment advisor. I'm not a professional seller of property. And how many of your clients, have lost, many of your an clients have lost... Have lost you please let, no, no, how many don't of your subject. clients have let lost money, then, point. in property? How many let of your clients that you've been recommended money? How many Will have they lost money? Will you let me finish my point, please? Far away. 110,000 transactions a month on average, for the 10 years up to 2008. Now it's 35,000 a month. So yes, I agree with you. There is a huge demand for property, but when you can't get the finance, you cannot get that property, it ain't going to happen. And the reason why you're incredibly busy is because there's a lot of people demanding, but how many of them can ultimately not get the mortgage? About one in two. And on top of that, um, All right. um, the number of estate agents that have gone out of business, so there's a smaller number of people selling, so All obviously right. you're taking more market nobody, share. Nobody's saying the market hasn't gone down in terms of the numbers of sales, but it is not the end of the world as, as you're trying to make Let's it. Let's find out what we're selling home tonight. James is in London. Mark's in Plymouth. Hello, James. Hello there. How are you doing? Doing all right, mate. You need to read it off in the background. We'll come back to you in just a second. Okay. Mark in Plymouth. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, hi, how are you? You're an ex-estate uh, agent, Mark. 
I am indeed, yeah, 10 years. I've only recently come out of agency. I think all your guests are right. Um, well, they pop- couldn't all be right, for goodness sake. They're arguing cat well, and dog. No, no, let me explain. It's a very... Estate agency and property sales is very, very complicated. I'll give you an example. Um, some of the houses that have sold recently in Plymouth have actually sold at the same price as at the peak of the market. They haven't come down one penny. And they've sold, and they've gone through, and they've valued up on survey, and they've sold because of supply and demand. They've been in good locations. There aren't many on the market, and people who can afford to pay a good price for a house, people are out there. They can do it. What type of and houses so, is this you're talking about? We're looking at a, a period detached Victorian Edwardian property in a good road. The supply and demand factor in Plymouth, for instance, there aren't a lot of good properties, generally speaking. So when they come onto the market, people, if there's not much on the market, will want to get that property. And there are a lot of people out there who've got the money to buy a house. I think Jonathan, what he's saying overall, I think he's right. I think the bulk of the market will drop. And I don't know how much, because as Sarah was saying, nobody knows. But let me give you an example. In Plymouth, you could buy a typical terraced property that's quite a nice period terrace property in a good area in the year 2000 for about £90,000. That property at the moment is still on the market for 200, and I think that's too much for the bulk of the market. That's what I'm getting at. So I think a lot of people now will not will be in trouble. I'm in finance now, and we haven't sold a mortgage for a first-time buyer now for four months. Yeah. And the mortgages that we are arranging, people are stretching themselves in this country massively. They haven't put, they're not investing in pensions because they've got no spare money. There's less disposable income. And I think the bulk of the market overall, I think the prices will go down. And even, so I, think there, I think there are pockets. All right. Right. I think there are pockets where they'll be fine. If Mark, you're earning 30000 my partner's earning 30000 for instance, we're OK. Mark, thank you. Even the, the houses at the top end of the scale, uh, those at uh, more than £1 million, uh, they have fallen from 453 sales to 242. Uh, that's a drop of 47%. Uh, that's uh, in, in this price range, May compared with uh, uh, May 2008. So that's May 2009 compared with May 2008. Uh, James in London. Hello, James. Hi, how you doing? Go ahead, Matt. Um, I just want to make the point that this is all about interest rates. So we're talking about houses here, but we could could be talking about any asset class. And when we talk about houses, we might be talking about houses in Plymouth that haven't moved or flats in city centres where have been overbuilt. They've already fallen 30%. But the price today is solely the result of interest rates. Now, admittedly, mortgage finance is hard to come by for potential buyers. But existing holders of property have been bailed out by low interest rates. And anybody who can get a mortgage has been attracted to get that mortgage because of low interest rates. Uh, but, 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 James, it's, really it's artificial. Yeah, but it's an interesting point you make because although the Bank of England base rate is at 0.5%, the margin that the banks are now charging is a lot more than it was a couple of years ago. And the banks, yeah, are, you, the banks are adding on 3 and 4%. So people actually could be paying more now in interest because the big, big deals that were around a couple of years exactly. ago are, 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 are no longer available from the banks. But most, most people who are on existing mortgage deals have rolled onto standard variable rates, which weren't limited. There was no limit to where the standard variable rate could fall to. So that's why you get the stories about people paying, you know, one pound a month because the computer can't work unless they make that payment. So there's people who've, whose deals are finished, who've been bailed out by a low SVR because it wasn't capped. And even if you, and, and then on the buy side, if you, if you take a tracker now, you can get a tracker with the Woolwich for less than 3%. That's it's artificially low. Chips, anybody I... who's buying now is, I think, being horribly naive. Eventually, all of the money that's been forced to the system is going to have to find a home. Chips, and that's I... what we're seeing in pockets of the property market. Okay. Jim, thank you, mate. We're out of time. Sarah, lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. Jonathan, David. Thank you. Pleasure as always. It's eight minutes now to midnight. We'll have a look at the... Uh, Saturday morning papers in just a second. All the headlines coming in, front pages coming in. We'll have a look at them.